I was just saying. You need that? No, I was going to help you. Yeah, that's good. That's rough. Right. Life, life. <laughs> it's making it a little life. 
Um, to, give, to give you that conception that it's not a robot or it's, it's not a train. Um, so the digits were made by just putting some glue right there and squeezing it together? Putting some glue and squeezing it together. Why would you use the word manipulate instead of maneuver? Um, manipulate, because, because when you're using clay in art form, you're, you're manipulating it to look however you want it to look. So that's why I say manipulate. Um, I chose the colors for my puppets because they represent some of my heritage with the, um, the, the tan skin and uh, the black skin. Um, in Jim Henson's case, he used colors that could represent anybody. As you can see here in this shirt from, from Assessment Street Live, you see some of the colors that Jim Henson used in his puppets, from green to orange to yellow. Now, in, the many, in many cases, Jim Henson didn't um, um, make puppets to be humans or necessarily animals. Sometimes he just created something and it turned out to be whatever. But he just created it. And that's the one thing I really appreciated about um, Jim Henson is his imagination and his creativity. Um, he just put his mind to work. And that's sort of like what I did because I didn't have a plan to make these puppets. It was all in my head. So when I came together, I remembered, hey, foam, the glue, the scissors, and I can manipulate it to come to look like this. Um, some of my supplies, spray paint, $4, the glue about $6, any ruler. Um, usually, usually you want a ruler that's longer than 12 inches because for, for a lot of the measurements, you have to measure really long. And if you um, don't make the line straight, you can get a really awkward looking puppet and you want to make it look as, as, a, as perfect as possible or as close to, as close to perfect as possible. Here is a set of some eyes that are used for my puppets. And as you can see, it's hard to see now, but the mouths, and the mouths are open. But when the mouths are closed, you can kind of see the eyes that I used. And these eyes are very inexpensive. Um, when I was creating the puppets, I had to buy about six sets of eyes because um, when I put, I put the eyes in before I painted the puppet, what that did was, it, when I ran into trouble when I was painting, because I would paint the eyes, you wouldn't be able to see the eyes, so I could take them off and put it back on. So it was a real learning process when I was making these puppets all over me for the first time. Um, Jim Henson revolutionized puppets, the um, puppet industry. And when I'm watching television now, I see all the time um, puppet shows that are not um, related to Jim Henson's productions, but he kind of paved the way for a lot of shows. Um, and although he's no longer living, his production company still lives on and has spread into all business markets, from a Sesame Street theme park in Pennsylvania to a Broadway play, which, which is where the show came from, but, um, Sesame Street Live. Henson has proven time and time again so it made a lasting impression on every area that he's touched. Um, from children's books, from puppets to children's books. And if you look right here, there's a list that you can pass around. This is a list that I got from the library that lists a whole bunch of children's movies that Henson has created over the years. So he has really expanded his business. Um, at this time, I would like to give you an example of, the, of a skit that we usually play on Sesame Street. Um, this skit is titled Making Friends, and without further ado, I'll show you Making Friends. Oh, my 
enjoy the little presentation I um, just um, showed you. And I just want to ask you um, if there are there any questions about the things that I used here as far as um, the books or the equipment. No, but we want some more puppet shows. Yeah. You want some more puppet shows? Of course yeah. you do. Um, well, the skit is short because we, would, we didn't really know if we could pull it off. Um, but we could do a little um, free freelancing if you like. Yeah, yeah. Is there a, I'm just trying to figure out if, uh, if someone is interested in becoming a 
up to your, you know, get into the how, how does this world come to you? Um, well, I mean, besides making it, I mean, where do you go to school for something like for this? For starters, actually, in colleges, um, the college I think Jim Henson went to was Maryland, um, they had um, theater. And for one thing, theater teaches you how to use different voices and be different people. So that helps in one way. Um, they also have um, workshops which travel across, across the country. I'm not pretty sure where they travel, but I know that they travel. Um, the Muppet Workshop travels around the country trying to recruit different puppeteers each year because it brings a different edge to the show that they create. So most puppeteers are actors? Most did, very much so, very much so. Most, the, um, the thing about puppeteer is a person uses puppets to be different people. So for example, if I can could, I could make two voices for both, for both of these puppets, and be two different people. But if I, the way I look, if I use two different voices, you will still see me as the same person. So, act, so they're very much actors, and they're using two puppets to be different people at different times. How did you feel as you um, saw each puppet come alive? You know, because piece by piece. You know, I remember the last I saw was the head. You know what I'm saying? Um, and the hand. But I didn't see them actually come alive. Was there a sense of feeling? What did you go through? Very much so. Um, especially when making the first puppet. Because everybody would come up to me and run, wow, what's that? It's cute. They're like, they can talk. And so from those, from those moments on, I, be, I, be, I began to, to um, come alive with him. And before he even had eyes, before he even had <coughs> color, before he even had a shirt on his back, he had a personality that I was already showing, showing around in the school. So it comes alive. Once you put piece by piece together, it comes alive. And how did you feel? I felt, I felt um, great. I felt, I felt real good because people would come up to me like, you need this? Wow. That looks like Kermit the Frog. And I'm like, well, it's not Kermit the Frog. And I feel good because they're comparing my work with Jim Henson. And I don't know if he's good at this work. He's, he's, he's great. Did you not necessarily rehearse this skit, but did you sort of rehearse bringing the puppet to life for these other people when they would come around? Um, not rehearse. I think it just comes natural. Like when we did afterwards, having like freelance. Um, it's just, you, you, you say things that you think he might want to say. And that's, and that's, really, that's what you do. So you're just, you're just guessing. I, I never had to rehearse it. But have you, have you done puppet shows with puppets like this in the past? Never, never before. But, but, it's, but it, I think it's just simple because he's, he's a part of me in a way. So by me thinking what he would want to say, it would be simple to go around and have conversations with people. But why would you say he's a part of you? Do you mean by his personality or? In a way, um, I think he's a side of me that I couldn't show people, that I couldn't walk around with. Right. And I can show that side when I'm with a puppy right. and everybody would think it's funny. Right. I don't think it's so simple. But I'll tell you why I don't think it's so simple. Um, in watching the show right now, and I think, and I'm sure you, you do recognize that you are deeply indebted to Fred for helping you out, but in watching the two puppets, your puppet seemed much more alive and there was, there was a lot more, what's the right word, um, continuity between the physical motions of the puppet and the words that you were saying. Whereas Freddie, who may have been doing this for the first time, mm -hmm. with Robbie, Robbie was like this a lot of time. All right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Mouth wide open, pointing to the ceiling. Yeah. I, I can explain that. And, and, and I mean, I, I think, I don't know if it's because you had done puppeting, puppeteering before, mm -hmm. or, or, or what it was. Maybe it was the angle that, that Freddie was at reaching for the thing. But your puppet definitely seemed, Freddie made you look good. All right. Freddie definitely made you, you look good. Well, I'll, explain, I'll, I'll, explain, I'll explain that. I'll explain that. The reason that is because Freddie never did, never, he didn't help me make it, creating it. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the reason why Jim Henson encouraged people to make their own puppets and bring them to the show. Because he wanted them to have feeling, he wanted them to have the feeling of being a part of him, of being a part of the puppeteer, which will help the show, it will help the realism of, of the puppet. And another thing is that when I was doing, doing making them, when I just had the head, I would like not practice, but just walk around talking to people. And when I walk around, I don't walk around with my mouth wide open, so I want to make the puppet sort of like me. So you did practice it. Not, but I wouldn't call it practicing, because I didn't say, all right, I'm going to practice this. It just came naturally. Yeah, you wanted but to But it was practice, in a way. 
you wanted him to look as real as possible, yeah. so you tried to keep his mouth closed and moving when he was talking, yeah. like you do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, I, th I guess it's from watching um, the um, Sesame Street on TV and seeing how they work the puppets. I kind of learned through, through watching it too. How to control the puppets? That's but when you're when when JJ was not speaking, his mouth was almost closed. So you were obviously squeezing with your hand. Mm -hmm. When Robbie was not speaking, he was out. You know, couldn't see his eyes, couldn't see the rest of his face. He was straight up. So clearly, you had you had picked up on the fact that there are certain ways you need to hold your hand and manipulate the puppet and the angle of the neck and everything. But I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say I consciously practiced it. Maybe it took consciously I practiced it. Hmm. But I wouldn't say I consciously practiced it. Hmm. I think it, it, it came to me. Mm -hmm. Now, would you say that his, their mouths open like that is one of the things that you would have to get better with in making the puppet? Exactly, better? yes. Um, okay, as, they shouldn't be that open. No, they should not be this uh, open. But um, these puppets are basically to perform. Henson made a lot of puppets for show that would just sit in certain positions and look mm -hmm. a certain way. So these puppets, when you put your hand in, they're capable of opening and closing because they're for performances. Now he had his puppets were a lot more advanced and he had much more equipment and technology, so I guess that gave that gives him the edge in, in puppetry. Can I give a sense of how sure. I'll pass both of you. I'll pass both of you. I wanted to get an idea from your writing about the uh, <coughs> your about the puppet theater show, the Breton Puppet the Theater, Breton puppet theater when you went and you found these, uh, saw these 12 feet tall. How do, they, how do you manipulate those? I mean, um, you mentioned stakes and whatever, but okay, 12 well, feet. These puppets are about 12 or even more. Wow. And in the back of this of this little book <laughs> that they gave me. Um, Why are they so tall? They were so tall because they're not traditional puppets. They were like big stage giant puppets that one person in their whole body would have to be in it to manipulate it. And if you look in the back of here, you see, you can get kind of an, an, an example. I don't know if you can truly see, but they're really, really tall. And the way you work them is, you would put a sort of harness around your shoulders. And with two sticks and two hands, you would then control the movements mm -hmm. of the puppet. And the sticks were at least five feet tall. And the puppet, the, um, the heart, the puppet was made out of uh, sort of like plastic or um, confetti type thing, like plastic. And they were really huge and heavy. And you really labored in those puppets. Wow. So I really, I really didn't enjoy that. And another thing about that was that those people were dedicated puppeteers. They spent from the time they woke up to the time they went to sleep working on these puppets, trying to perfect the, the, the show. And I, just, I didn't know if I was ready to do that. I, I think I, there's more to my life right now than just I'm talking to my own puppets. Uh, 12 feet, 12 feet, 15 feet, and they're behind a stage similar to this, so no. that they stick out. No, you can see. the stage is set up flat on the ground. Mm -hmm. The entire walls are painted black, like a stage, and the stands are sort of like a basketball game. When you sit down and right. you watch like a game. So it's no stage, it's not, it's not elevated, it's right on the ground. And you walk around um, controlling these big, huge puppets. Um, and it's, it's real difficult because it's about 10 people working together to move each 12-foot right. puppet. So you really got to practice that a lot. Well, I just noticed, I just had my hand in there just for like 30 seconds and I know how warm it gets so yeah, quickly. Yeah, very warm. Um, and I think that's one of the things that Jim Henson probably perfected is that he used the foam, but not in all areas of the puppet because that would make it too hot in the hand and you couldn't stay in it too long. Right. So in some cases, um, I actually went and saw one of um, Jim Henson's puppets at um, Jim Henson Productions, which is located on 68th Street, I think Park Ave, Fifth Avenue, right around that area. And I actually got to touch one of the puppets. Mm -hmm. And even though they use foam, like for the body, arms, and hands, around the face, there are a lot of fabric areas. The, the puppets are covered with fabric. And you might be able to see it in one of these pictures. How Kermit the Frog is covered with fabric. Covered with like a green. It's not foam fleece. on the inside, though, right? It's foam on the inside to, to get the, the form of bodies and certain parts of his face. But for the most part, he's, he's mostly yeah. fabric. Mm -hmm. hmm. So you're saying this, is, this fabric is not stretched over a solid piece of foam? There are this, spaces in the foam. Yeah, there are spaces 
so it's only reads. Yeah, so it reads, which makes it much lighter also. I can see what you're saying about working on more consistency with making the puppets. Because I now know why Freddie had difficulty yeah. manipulating the mouth of this one. This one does not close as well as, as and, JJ and, does. And the reason that is also is that there is, the way I glued the mouths of the puppet are, are a little different. Because I was trying to remember what Jonathan had taught me and how to make the mouse close. Because the way you do it is, you put a little glue here and you have it like this. But this foam is so thick, it's about one inch thick. As, whereas he would probably use a half, a half an inch or three fourths of an inch. And this foam is uh, one inch thick, so it's really thick. So I really, even though I glued the mouse, I really couldn't get it to kind of lay down. Because it's so, so thick. what would you do differently then? What I'd probably do differently is, uh, is uh, ask for uh, thinner foam, thinner yeah. foam. Um, and that's basically the only thing that I, I can really think of that, that I could do differently, because everything else came out the way I wanted it to. Well, you could, I mean, you experiment with different... Yeah, experiment different body with parts. The glue, uh, with the glue and how much to pinch down. Well, and, and that's another thing, with the glue, it's so difficult because once you spray it, a whole bunch comes out. It's not like you can use a stick and right. put little parts where you want. Like I used to be able to do. Now the glue is like comes out really fast. So, so you would, why couldn't you? Why would you? Would you use the other type of glue with the stick? Well, actually, the store does not sell the glue like that anymore because um, I think it's like a hazard or something to have open glue because it's so it's kind of toxic. Mm -hmm. So you have to really use it in open spaces. So I guess they just move to use it in the can so that it can never be left open. And um, so it's only yeah. some here. When's the last time you saw this fellow, John? The last time I saw him was in junior high school. And in the, in the summer, I was working for summer youth. And I, was, I went to the school where we had to pick up our checks. That was the same school that I, that I worked with Jonathan. And I never saw him by chance, so I don't, I don't really know how he was doing it. But I hope he's all right. When I was reading the paper last night and I got to that section, um, I was overwhelmed with one thought. You should really try to find him. And you should give him a copy of this paper. That cuts my a lot. Do you know anyone that knows him? Um, surprisingly, when you go back to the school and ask people who never worked with him, they tell you no. But the people who have been seeing his puppets, <coughs> seen him create them, they always know him. He's Jonathan. I know him. He made puppets. But it seemed like the people who, who weren't touched by his work really didn't you know, keep tabs or keep hold of him because they probably didn't think he was important. I think you're always going to try to track him down. And maybe a little more than just the trip back to the school. You know, date a little. Because uh, it's quite a tribute you make to him in the paper, and I'm sure he would, uh, he'd like to see it. Junior, we're talking six, seven years ago, right? Um, more like four or five years. <coughs> and I'm sure he'd like to see, if he only knew you back in the eighth grade, I'm sure he'd like to see you. Yes. yes. Any questions, Ken? I'm good too. Oh, I'm sorry, I did have one. What was that? This one? Right yeah, the video. Is that how you did the mouth? Oh, uh, yes, actually, um, and try, when once you make the mouth, there's, a, there's, there's an extra part that you have to put into the, into the mouth so, so that you can give it that flat look. But this was, was sort of like a copy of the frame of the mouth. And therefore, I put the phone, I cut the, I cut the, the um, outline out, placed it on top of the phone, and just traced it. Now, from that trace, I put them off a piece and it fit perfectly. Whereas if I would did it by eye, I probably wouldn't have got it as even as I would like and it would came out a little form. So you're saying that you have some patterns now. Yes. Almost like a person that wants yeah. to make a trace. Yeah, I have some patterns, like for the hand, trace the hand on the phone, <coughs> cut it out. That's basically all this stuff is right here. So how come uh, these puppets only have four fingers? Well, in memory, in memory of kind of Jim Henson, he only used four fingers in his, his puppets. But I guess he, he wanted to make a little distinction between human and um, create, um, imagination or fiction. So that's why my puppets only have four fingers. Oh, very because I never realized they only had four fingers. You can't really tell, because a lot of cartoons, they use four fingers also. Any other questions? So I wish that we can have a going out um, <laughs> um <laughs> he's there <laughs> 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 yeah
Can you ask Freddie a question? Freddie, how did you feel? This is your first time using the puppet? Mm -hmm. Okay, how did you feel using the puppet and talking through the puppet? Nervous. Nervous? How come? Because I don't, I don't know what to say. I didn't read the, the script or anything. There was, was no script. script. Yeah, there was a oh. small script. Okay. But I mean, what feeling did you get from the puppet? Did it bring out the little boy? In <laughs> what about you, Jamal? Um, well, the, the, the little boy actually never left me, so he didn't even bring him out. He just kind of displayed it a little bit. Very good feeling. <clears throat> yeah, very good feeling. I'm glad to hear you guys laugh, really. And, you know, I felt like I did my job. So, can we get an overall show? Overall? So, a little show for the road. Yeah, a little show. Let's try to be ginger. We enjoy it. We enjoy it. Ginger is a little obsessed with the idea of that place. And the scene is um, the, the prom coming up. Oh, the graduating class. The graduating class. Let's see it now. Did you decide whether to go to this one? Did you decide whether to go to this one? Yeah. Did I try to make him up with this one?
one time I gave you a three point something. I need you to know that. You didn't always get four from me. <laughs> um, but this, I learned a whole lot. You know, I missed a lot of my childhood. And I need to tell you, Jamal, you brought back so much for me. And this is all about me. Um, the paper was good, and he brought up a point which I didn't think about, but it's a good point, you know, because there are a lot of people that don't know about some of the things that you mentioned, I for one. Um, I brought it to someone else to be. I told you they want you to do a show. Um, I think that um, you're a puppet within yourself. <laughs> I enjoyed this. I really did. And I'm so very proud of you. And congratulations on your first book. <laughs> um, I actually didn't give you a 4.0 because I said sometimes the usage of your language, sometimes when you say uh, got, you say that a couple of times in the paper. Right? Um, yeah, and, and that was the only, the only reason. I thought it was extremely informative. Uh, Charlie's uh, suggestion is well taken as well, but uh, I'm very, very proud of you know, what you have done throughout your years for yourself and for the school. Thank you. In the paper, I mean, I postponed going to this pretty big party last night because I was in the middle of reading, and I'm like, no, I'll be late. It just totally grabbed me and educated me again. Thank you very much. I'm going to give you a comment. I'll give you a full point out on it. But you're now at a level of writing where you're going far surpass my level over that. But start reading other people's because when I read your paper, I've read so many of them now, I definitely know your voice. Mm -hmm. And you've got a routine, which is a good one. Um, the next level is to expand and start reading others and seeing how you can expand and get variety on some of your, um, some of your voice. Is that, am I saying voice the right word, Charlie? Mm, I think so. Because um, he does have a very distinct voice. Very distinct. Like when I was reading this, I'm like, oh, this is, this is the <coughs> way you're talking about. I knew it would be. So your next step, you've mastered this step that we could hear to be going on to study this more is to start exploring some more voices in your writing. Um, in the presentation, which is, uh, can't wait to see you on Broadway, you know, since you said I know that I'll definitely pay my 30 bucks to go see you. Thank you. All right. Right, 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 right.